It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Omar Rashan Borja, who is of hard, Hardware Pod, Red Shirt Sports fame, and a lot more. Omar, I, I appreciate you stopping by today. Listen, there's a, a lot of Division I football talk of late, and you've been a big part of that as well, covering sports at that level, FBS, FCS, and more. Before we get going too far in there, this week, what's the big news that you've been talking about this week? I think this week, the big news, um, see, I do a lot of freelance work. Well, thank you. Well, first off, uh, Joey, thank you for having me. And I think fame is a, is a loosely used term, but I really do appreciate it. <laughs> um, I think this week, the big news uh, that I'm trying to talk about, because it's mostly, it's not really long-term plan. It's just whenever I see a story, I just kind of like brainstorm a little bit of things. But there's a couple of things I've been wanting to get out, uh, wanting to collaborate with a couple of accounts of um, I'm a big fan of intersectional college football games. Um, I love bowl games. One of the nicknames I, I, you know, it's honestly a self-given name. Uh, nickname is the Kornacki of bowls, like Kornacki from of NBC fame. Um, when he does the whole playoff projections, and of course, a presidential election mm -hmm. uh, simulations and projections. Uh, Akron and UNLV play. Um, they just recently scheduled a home and home. And a lot of people don't realize that the MAC has a rich history. The Mid-American Conference, where Akron resides, has a rich history in Las Vegas. So just talking about that, talking about how big that is for the conference. I plan on, on uh, pushing out a draft this weekend, hopefully getting that um, hopefully getting that either approved to, uh, to Hustle Belt, one of the sites that I freelance for. And if they don't take it, just put it on Red Shirt Sports. And then on Friday, I'm hoping to contact a, a friend that I've uh, that I've had on the podcast for a long time. Uh, his name is Dwayne Nash of the Yard HBCU Sports to talk about North Carolina A and T's. Um, they they got a they got a linear local TV deal on one of the my TV stations in Greensboro, which is huge for the program. Just uh, any time that you get games on over the air television, no matter how big the market or the scope, it's huge, especially for a program at the FCS level like North Carolina A and T. So those are a couple of things I'm kind of brainstorming of, I'm working on as well. Um, just doing more free, just doing more freelance work. Excuse me for um, for as for football as Army joins the American, as I know you live in Oklahoma, Army plays Tulsa this year at Skelly Stadium in Army's first year in the American. So just a variety of things. The, the trouble is time with uh, with work as that's what, that's of course, uh, you had on the agenda just talking about, I guess, what I do outside of this, or that could be the other way around, what, what I do for a day job. Um, but that's that's a little bit of the things I have planned, the, the ideas I have planned, just trying to pitch out for this next week, sir. It's a lot of fun doing this. Most of us do have to have a day job, if you will, to to keep things going, and, and that's all right. Lots of video content, lots of writing that that you're doing right now. How, how did you get into uh, FBS and FCS? Those seem to be the, the areas in, in which you cover the most. Yeah, so I've been doing uh, sports writing in some capacity for eight years. Well, it'll be eight years this year. A friend of mine, Alex Funderburg, started a small army football blog. Uh, and of course, like I, I didn't see myself being a sports writer full time. Of course, every person or every every person that grows up playing sports sees himself playing the sport at a high level. And for me, that high level was uh, Division three. Of course, I, I thought I knew where I stood as an athlete, thought I was OK. You know, I'm not D1. I'm not D2. I'm probably Division three because I love the academic profile of those schools. Uh, so I, I applied to a bunch of the little Ivies, got accepted to a few, but at the end of the day, um, tuition was an issue with those schools, of course. So, um, ended up going to the United States military Academy. And then I took a break from there, of course, because, um, you know, step settling into my freshman year there at the Academy when, um, a friend, when that same friend, uh, Alex Funderburg put in a good word for me at, um, the, at a group of five site, uh, forgotten five which I wrote for for three years until um, they kind of disbanded the site and left me the reins. And I was the only one writing for the site. So it turned into a freelance for from 2020 to 2022. And then 2022, uh, by the grace of God, he put um, he put James Singleton, um, a VMI grad, into into my life and uh, introduced and he and James Singleton started. Uh, red shirt sports, which I now write for now, which I write for now. So originally I had started writing for the group of five, but with red shirt sports having the emphasis on the FCS, I think that's when um, I guess I fell, I fell in love really. I guess I fell in love, I guess my freelance days when I really had complete flexibility to write about anything like division one um, FCS, division two, even division three, I would write a bit about. 
um, just anything that fascinates me, anything that that I guess really shows the true core of college football, the true pageantry of college football. I write about, and, and I think now these days that's starting to look like the football championship subdivision with regional conferences, with time tested rivalries, with conferences that make sense and are rooted in history, like the Southern Conference has been around since 1921, like the SWAC, which is, I think, the third oldest conference in America, uh, with Grambling Southern and, and all and all the great HBCUs. Um, so, I mean, that that's a little bit of my background. And then, of course, I've been trying to get some freelance jobs as well, so I can broaden my audience and then just appeal to different crowds. Uh, and I think that's a great thing is I was telling one of this one of uh one of the soldiers at work yesterday is like uh, when talking about my, my sports journals, my free time, how like I guess my dreams and like what I what I want to pursue. Uh it's works my favor just having a job that uh that the good Lord has blessed me with and has paid well with um uh, that pays well that I can just tell people I'll work for free. And that is that has gotten me a couple roles, a couple of roles with some good, some good writers. Like they said, where pay was an issue, and I'm like, you don't have to pay me. I'll work as hard as I can. So uh, that's, that's just a little bit of my background about uh, from writing. Uh, I guess podcasting. Um, I've been doing. I was doing that with a friend from before the summer of our senior year, and then it didn't take off until the pandemic when um, we, we just had a bunch of free time. And then from there, I'm like, you know what? I like doing these conversations. It originally started with like just being my friends doing that, but like um, they're gracious enough to let me take the reins of the channel and just interview whoever on a whim. So yeah, sorry, a little long winded, but that's, that's my background. That's all right. Uh, you enjoy college football then that, that is the key in, in getting into what's there. You mentioned red shirt sports a couple of times. And uh, though there, there may have been a site that, that, disbanded red shirt sports is active and going right now tell us a little bit about that because it, it is i mean it seems to be all levels of, of college football there yes so uh red shirt sports started exclusively as an fcs site um i mean shoot i, I I'm, a, I'm a i'm a u.s army signal officer so like we work with a lot of computers but like i'm not great with them i just do administrative stuff like our site manager james singleton uh our site design honestly i guess i guess in other terms he's the godfather of uh, of red shirt sports he's amazing with the web design so because he was able to change like the web design like the way we we're able to categorize things it, it expanded from fcs football to d3 fbs but it's mainly just fcs and fbs we do have a couple of writers uh one of them one of them is john hooper he's uh we call him socon john writes about the so southern conference uh, really dedicated to that league. We have another guy who just joined, uh, Preston Adams, who writes mostly about uh, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. Uh, and then there's me, where I write about anything that interests me. I write about TV contracts. Uh, I write about uh, intersectional games. I write about there, like um, the way I was putting it. Uh, the way I was putting it with um, in an interview yesterday um, with actually VMI's athletic director, which we're we're on the we're we're in talks about. Because James is a VMI grad, we're in talks of expanding coverage and VMI helping the profile registered sports and registered sports helping the profile of VMI. But um, like I was saying yesterday is that oh, there's so many people that cover what happens on the field, who's making the playoff, who's making the FCS playoffs, who's, um, you know, what, what went wrong here. There's like not enough people really covering, say, conference realignment or local TV deals or uh TV network selections, like something I'm awaiting right now to write a story on is the Northeast Conference's midweek mid CBS Sports Network mm -hmm. uh, selections. So uh, there's not a people talking about what I call the nuts and bolts of college football where, um, you know, they help keep the darn thing together. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about about red shirt sports. We're still going strong. Um, we got a few. We have a few guys, but we're, we're, we're mighty. <laughs> RedshirtSports.xyz, by the way, in case you want to find Omar there. We're visiting, by the way, with Omar Rashan Borja from Redshirt Sports from Hardware Pod. And if you have an opportunity to see him online on video on the YouTube channel as well, he would probably greet you right now by saying good morning or good evening, good night, good afternoon, wherever it is that you happen to be watching us right now. So I just want to I, I give a shout out there because, hey, listen, people may be watching us whenever, sometimes in the middle of the night as well. And I know you you have to work through the night sometimes to get some of these videos out. And that that's a big deal. Your writing is great. I've, I've 
really appreciate your writing style and, and you're very good at what you do for someone who says, Hey, listen, we, you thought first about being an athlete and you're right. All of us did. Uh, and I appreciate that. I don't, I don't have the height to do what I would like to have done in basketball or, you know, baseball or whatever, but, uh, I, I, you know, got opened up the door and, and we have an opportunity to still get to work in sports and in broadcasting and writing and other things along these lines too. So with, I mentioned that, that you're a good writer, uh, do, were you trained in that area as well? You know, you talk about journalism. Do you do you have schooling in that, or or where did you come from from a, the writing standpoint? Uh, yes, sir. So I mean, I do have schooling. School of hard knocks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, but I mean, I, I I really don't have schooling in journalism. It, it's just um, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in uh in some things like uh the with Malcolm Gladwell, the law of ten thousand hours. I think it is where it's like if you do something enough, you get enough repetitions, you'll be good at it. Now, if I practice enough, I'll never be able to dunk a basketball. I don't think that's what Malcolm Gladwell means by the law of ten thousand hours. But I've had. It's not just all me. I mean, of course, it's God, but He God's placed people in my life that have cared enough to help me um, grow as a writer. Um, people, I think, that have helped me a lot um, because I haven't had an editor. I guess one person in particular is Dan Cabeza, um, a fellow West Point grad who writes, who runs As for Football, uh, the great Army football site, probably the leading Army football site on the internet. Um, he is constantly pushing me to get better, to read. Um, Honestly, I never thought I'd be reading books about the art of writing, but to read those, to understand structure, scene and everything and just like, you know, pushing me to really see it as an art. So, I mean, I don't really have much journalism background. My writing background comes from my history degree. Um, I mean, really, for me, I never considered myself a great writer. I think I think my greatest talent is my work ethic. And for me, I would really see through the process of the, of the writing process. I would get a draft done when when other when other students would wait the last minute to even start a draft, I would be starting on like a on a Saturday afternoon, little by little, just making my draft, doing my research, uh, listening to music. Because I mean, uh, the way I saw it, writing is it was an excuse to listen to music. Uh, I'm a big R and B fan, uh, and then just writing my drafts, and then turning in a draft to my my professor and seeing what he had to say, then making those fixes. And I would go at least once, and sometimes I would go twice to my professor to perfect that art. And then one thing that was just so, so amazing because I, I don't like, believe it or not, like I run this podcast, but in academic settings, I don't like to stand out. I like to be just a guy that's there soaking it all in. Um, and one of my, one of my professors, he said to the class, he said, uh, for it was a, it was a military history class. Uh, I think it was pre, pre World War One military history. And he said, uh, he said, one of the students in here had graduate level work. And, and I mean, you know, I, of course I didn't know who we met. Then he put the paper down on my desk and he said, this is brilliant. Got a 98 on a civil war paper on some civil war thing. I'm not a big military history fan, but I think, I don't think it was my talent. I think it was my dedication to the craft and to the art that really helped me there. And uh, it paid off. And he, he even said to the same professor, he's like, he's like, he's like, you have, he's like, you have so much going on up here. You have uh, so much greatness going on up here. It's like, why are you so quiet during class? I didn't really have an answer because I just, you know, I guess I like to play it cool in college. So, but that's a little bit about my writing background. Well, it, it translates to the, the audience and those who are reading. It's very good. And I, I appreciate that. Also, the research is there too. So it's, it's fun to get to, to see what you're putting out in print because clearly you, you do know about what you're talking. I talked about the writing as well. You have the hardware pod. Uh, where'd you get that name? Lots of guests on there too. So it's a lot to keep up with. Yes, sir. It definitely is. Um, and I, I just want to say, if I, I feel so impolite and I didn't thank you for the kind words um, about, about my writing, really appreciate it. You're, you're fine. Not a problem. <laughs> but for hardware. So we've been kind of toying with the name since, um, since honestly that, that I guess my, before my senior year of high school with my friend, uh, friend Marshall, who, unfortunately left the podcast because he works in investment banking and he's insanely busy in that industry. But um, yeah, like we started off as like a hundred yards of podcast then for like in high school. Then when we came back in the pandemic, we came back as a, as a podcast formerly known as a hundred yards of podcast. And then when Marshall couldn't continue anymore, uh, we, we started as hardware because we had the ideas like how many, 
how many um, podcasts are talking about a lot of people talk about the, the race, the playoffs, the bowl chase, but how many people are talking about the actual race to the Heisman, the actual, I wouldn't say politics that goes into it because politics is, you know, done much damage to this country and everything, but the actual uh, sort of like, what goes into the writers voting for the Heisman, the Heisman moments and everything, where we would talk about that when we talk about the awards or the individual position awards too. So that's why we call it hardware. Uh, I mean, we might, we might, we might have to rebrand sometime too. And I mean, it's just, it does, it's not exclusively awards because uh, we call it hardware. Jackson and I, my, my current co-host, that's what we, that's what we focus on. But because like, he's given me the reins to, to run the channel, uh, I mean, he's like, he's really strong in talking about what happens on the field. And I look at things the way I joke around, around about it is like, he has an X's and O's perspective. I have the sports writer, the Grant Lynn Rice perspective of like, this player played in this moment. And this is why it's great because of this moment. This is the gravitas of this moment. So that's why, that's why we, um, we compliment each other. But when it comes to stuff from behind the scenes, my, my strength, like, you know, he allows me just to seek out other guests and just talk about that. So that's uh, hardware. We might possibly rebrand with red shirt sports. That was part of some of the idea generations, our idea, idea generation process with uh, VMI, which is a partnership that might kick off soon that we're, that I know James and I are excited about. So yeah, just a, just a little bit about the background and history of, um, of the hardware podcast and the form in the podcast, formerly known uh, as a hundred yard podcast slash hundred formerly known as hundred yard podcast. A, it's a little bit longer name. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue as as easily <laughs> if you're if you're typing in to try to find it. Uh, you've mentioned military more than once. Tell us a little bit about about what you do and and you're serving our country right now as well, along with doing uh, your service for the sports side of it. Yes, um, they. I mean, well, I guess it starts um, starts with my parents both being in the military. Uh, my my dad served twenty years in the military. Um, was 82nd airborne was uh, was a staff or yeah retired retired um after 20 years my mom um came to america from jamaica and then joined the military as a, as a way as a hand up as a way to uh better her circumstances served 8 years and that's how my parents met so i always they weren't in the military while i was i was a kid but i always grew up with a sense of patriotism because my parents were in the military I can remember, I think it was, I think it was fifth grade, either fourth or fifth grade when my, uh, my parents spoke to my entire charter school in Worcester at an assembly about patriotism, about serving your country. And it's, it's one of my, it's one of my cherished memories. Um, and so for me, I think, I mean, I, I had wanted to go a different route. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'd wanted to go a different route. But um, I'm in the military now, and God has numbered my steps as He as He always has. Um, I, so I graduated from the United States Military Academy uh, in the class with the class of 2021. I um, I, I had grown up uh, loving Army football, so I guess I guess West Point was a, was one of my top schools as a as a, as a kid. But I mean, I, I'm, of course, like I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not I'm I'm not trying to prop myself up as some hero. Um, I mean, I had I had apprehensions, I had doubts, and everything, um, but God rested my God rested my uh, my fears. He assured me and everything, and um, yeah, I've been I graduated the class of twenty twenty one. I've been a commissioned officer in the United States for the last three years. Time flies. They always say time flies when you're having fun. Well, time has flown, and I have not really been having fun for a lot of it. I'll be honest, <laughs> but God has been good. God has allowed me to. Um, God has given me strength. God has, you know, I've waited on the Lord. He's given me strength like wings of eagles. And yeah, that's just what I do in my, in my free time. And um, not many people at work know about my writing unless like there are some guys that are just, you know, what they call football guys, I guess, on Twitter and everything. And, um, you know, we talk about schemes. We talk about other things. And they know about my my sports journals and ambitions. And they've asked me to send send their story. So a couple people have asked, but I keep it on the on, on, on the low because, I mean, I, I, I don't really, I consider this like my personal life. And I don't want that like melding into work and everything. So, yeah, that's just a little bit of background about what I do in my in my in my free time. Just, you know, just being in the army. And I always get I always get coy when people say thank you for your service because, I always like think about it. the way I think about it is like, you know, we're, we're all on level ground 
at the, at the foot of the cross. And we're all trying to make a living here in some way. And we all make sacrifices of our own in any profession. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's just a little bit about, I guess, my, my day, my, my day job. I still would like to honor you for that any way around. I appreciate your humility in that, but, but it's still, it, it is something that, that is special. So, and beyond that, I, I'm, I'm hoping for you that it, it goes a little bit be, beyond just keeping it on the, on the low right there, because we've got to get out the word that, that you're doing a good job. So let me ask you then, as, as we wrap up our time together today, how do people, you know, how, where do they find you? How do they get in touch with you if they want to reach out? And because you do have, you know, a number of writers there on Red Shirt Sports, someone else may want to, to follow along and be in touch with that. But uh, they can find you online at uh, Red Shirt Sports and, and Hardware Pod too. Anything else? Just just give us all the information. Yes. So uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Omar Rashan Borja. It's just my full name uh, on, on uh, as my as my Twitter tag. And I am the only Omar Rashan Borja, I believe, on Twitter. So that's where you can find me. You can find Red Shirt Sports more importantly at Red Shirt Sports underscore. We had had some trouble like getting Red Shirt or trying to. I guess claim the red shirt sports or buy the red shirt sports uh, um, username on Twitter. We we've had no luck uh, without the underscore, but it's at red shirt sports underscore. You can find great content there. Uh, the podcast doesn't exactly have a Twitter page. I've been thinking about starting it, but the fe- but the I guess wondering about the return of starting something um, just right off the jump has kind of gotten me like apprehensive about starting Twitter. So there's not one yet. But those are my two main things. Of course, the hardware pod you can find on Spotify. I think it's on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we, we process the podcast through through Spotify for podcasters. So you can definitely find it on Spotify. Uh, and then you can find us on YouTube at the hardware pod. And that's essentially all the platforms. I mean, I think the thing that has been most fulfilling, I think, through all of this is having conversations about my faith, which like I haven't had many conversations about my faith um, through the platform that God's given me, but just I, I've, I've had lately um, there's, there's one, uh, there's a very great Christian creator uh, named uh, Bobby, Bobby, Will, uh, yeah, Bobby Wilson of uh, TNT college football podcast. And he has amazing content and he's been a great brother in Christ um, through us just talking to college football. So that's the thing I cherish the most about this. And I've been I've been into contact, just been able to talk about my faith with a couple more people and trying to just increase that, um, just showing people just, you know, that that God has given me this platform and I'm going to use it to, to speak his glory and show the joy that um, that he gives in this world through sports. Because at the end of, at the, end of the day, sports are a reprieve from the falling world, fallen world and everything allows us to escape and allows us to glorify God with our bodies. And I guess in our cases with our words and with um, the words we put on print. So I'm going to to give you the opportunity to say something on this podcast and this platform of what you might say, if you had that opportunity, I think you just did. So I, it was, it was very well stated and uh, done well. So Omar Rashawn Borja here on Midwest sports net on the summit. I appreciate you coming by and giving us some time today. I would like for you to come by again, uh, definitely to, to let, not let this be a one-time guest and, and come by, share a little bit more about your faith at that point in time. And, and we'll, we'll grow our, our channels together and just uh, hopefully grow in our faith together. But I appreciate you stopping by today. Yes, absolutely. I look forward to that opportunity too. Um, I really do.